Okay, so here's the Timex uh, Sinclair 1000 personal computer that I bought at a like a thrift store. It was original in box, had even the packing materials, user's manual, a whole bunch of paperwork, including a receipt that makes it look like it cost all of maybe 30 bucks, which is crazy. Computer itself. Uh, again, I got it for about 20 It's actually not worth much more. Um, but when I plugged it in for the first time, it did come with the original charger, it, it turned on and I got the K cursor that you would expect. But when I was pressing the keys, only like four of them worked. I think it was six, seven, eight, nine, maybe zero worked. The other keys, none of them worked. And I thought, well, okay, this is nothing I'm going to be able to do about this. Um, but I decided to open it up and take a look. And what I saw was that the um, the the like the leads that went from the keyboard into the actual processing board in the computer itself were cracked and damaged, um, and that was what I wanted to try to repair. So to take it apart, you have four screws in the back. Uh, there's one here, one here, and then you have to take off the two uh, little feet, little plastic. Uh, foam pieces and that's your third and fourth screw okay so the top just will come off should come off it's not there's no wires or anything which makes it a little easier and now we got three screws to take out and again you always want to keep these in order um, they are different sizes so one two and three so I'm going to unscrew those so when you open this up you don't want to just pull this so if I take I've taken the screws up but uh, the um, the lead from the keyboard, right? The keyboard is right there, to the PC board or whatever that is, is fragile and easy to break. So you want to be real careful as you kind of lift this up so that you can examine it. So these are the two leads. They were not completely detached or broken off when I opened up the computer, but they had been clearly cracked. So I ended up just pulling them out. Um, and what you're going to see me do is I'm basically trying to create a new clean way to insert them into the sockets on the board. One thing you have to make sure that you do is get the right width. Um, so where I'm cutting right now is, is the right width and you can tell by that the remains of what used to be there. So I trim that down clear sideways and I got about a quarter inch there to play with and I'm also going to trim along the top so that it's a clean straight edge. I don't want that jagged edge as I try to stick it into the socket, have a little piece break off. So I'm going to do the same thing with this other trace of eight. So again where I'm cutting right now that's the remains that in terms of the width how you know how why do I cut it. That last little piece that, that piece there that that um, guided me had been there previously. So again, cut the width, cut across the top, get a nice clean edge so that it will go into the socket cleanly. And, and you'll see that that looks, again at the moment, pretty good. All right, I got two clean, straight edges. So here we're going to go. Here, there's the keyboard piece in the top. There's those two leads. I'm going to insert them into the sockets that you see at the bottom of the card. So there they are. When I went to put them in, um, I, I again, you'll see that they barely go in. And at first I thought they weren't in, so I kept pushing and pushing on them, probably more than I needed to. I did try to use my, my full thumb. I didn't want to you know break it as I tried to insert it, but it barely went in. So it, it just goes in maybe an eighth of an inch. Um, you're going to see in a second I pull up on the ribbon and it works fine. You know, it holds. So it's actually in there better than I thought it was. So there you go. You see that again, that's in there. So this one again, check, take a look at how little it goes in. So push down with my full thumb, try not to put too much pressure as to break it. It goes in no more than an eighth of an inch, but it is in there. So then I had to uh, screw that board back into the top. There's the one screw, two, 
and three, make sure you have the right screws in the right place. Leave the, um, these two holes empty because you're going to see that the bottom piece has two holes where that are going to go into those holes. So don't think that you're missing something. All right, so the moment of truth, the screen's a little messed up, but I do have the K cursor. Uh, I'm going to now see what happens when I uh, press the keyboard. Let me see if that is going to work or not. So before, the only keys that worked were the 6, 7, 8, or 9, and 0. So 0 still works, 9 works, 8 works, 7 works, 6 I think did. See, here we go, 5, 4, 3, these are all new, 1. Uh, I don't know what that's supposed to do, but let me see. Q, oh shit. I don't know if I did. I'm going to unplug it and shut it down, start again. I don't know this computer, so let me try Z, oh, copy, L, X, C, V, B, N, N, period, space, space, okay, V, there we go, A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, I'm going to not hit the enter Q, uh, shoot, Q doesn't seem right, W, E, oh man, R, T, Y, U, I, O, P. Oh boy. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Got a problem with the Q. And the W and the E. R, T. Oh boy. All right, so unfortunately, I must have a break in there still somewhere. That's really disappointing. Well, partial success. That was a little exciting there. But obviously, not ultimate success that you need to make the thing work. All right, so I got it open back up. And I'm hoping somehow I just didn't get one of the leads in. It would be most likely at the edge somewhere. What I'm going to try to do is tighten it up. I'm going to push it in a little bit more. Um, you know, thinking it might be at one of the edges that, the you know, one lead didn't get in all the way. And I will look for a break somewhere else. Alright, so I tried to push it together and tighten it up. And what I've done already, so I'll just show you what I've done. I've used a multimeter, and I have it on this setting. A little arrow with a cross in it. And I want to see, that, that shows you whether something's conducting. What this does is, it's going to show me if, uh, yeah, it, you know, that if the, it's conducting. So if I got it in enough. There it goes. And I'm trying each one of these. I'm trying to make sure I only touch the right wire. And each one does have it. I already did these. I had to kind of get from the other side. And the point is, at this point, it is getting through. So I'm going to try it again, see if somehow when I tightened it up, it worked. I actually don't have much faith because it seemed like it was in there already snug, which means the break would have to be probably somewhere up in the keyboard or something, which is not good. All right, so I got it back together. I have essentially no, no confidence that it will work. Um, let me try the regular ones that were working one. I think T worked. No, T doesn't work. So, yeah, so you can, I don't know if you can see, T does not work, E doesn't work. So, same thing. A, S. So, same exact problem. Yeah, that stinks. Alright, well, I'm not sure what to do about that. So, those same keys are not working. Alright, so I'm going to try to see if these traces are working, are completely conducting. So I'm going to go here and pretty much go up as high as I can. So that one's working. Second one is fine. Third one. Fourth one. Fifth. Sixth. Um, you know what? 
There actually might be a break. But right here could be a crack. So let me see. So that's not conducting. All right. Oh, there we go. So if I'm on that side, yeah, as soon as I pass over that. Okay, so that. Yeah, so for those two, for these two, that seems to be a crack there. That would stop, obviously, the, the information coming from the keyboard to get to the processor. So now let's see if I can figure out a way to fix that. Obviously, I cannot cut that and, you know, redo it. It's, it would never reach. I barely have, I, you know, I have only maybe a quarter or half inch of play. So I can't cut that high. So uh, let me think about it. All right, so here's what I'm going to try to do. I have this um, self-adhesive copper tape. I'm going to cut a really skinny strip and basically try to um, stick it over that so that theoretically... That might be too skinny. It... Um, it It'll carry it. So I'm going to apply this sticker as best I can over so I'm not gonna, I'm going to leave it so I could potentially get it off because uh, you know if it's no good I don't want to leave it there but let me see that does anything so there it's on there oh it might be yeah so yeah I think interestingly enough the number is different like that goes as low as zero zero eight same thing so this is probably losing s something But you know what? So I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. So let me try that again. So I pushed it down some more. I'm gonna put it up here and down here at the bottom. That's actually not bad. Not quite. Okay, so let me do another one of those and I'll um then I'll probably put it back together and try it. So I've put on the two uh bandages, if you will across that break in the ribbon. I did uh, try them. They do both conduct. Again, a little bit different number. All the other strips say 008. When I try the two leads, these ones are different. I don't know how significant that will be. The other thing is the third one, oh, this the one next to it, also looks like there's almost a little crack extending into it, but it conduct it conducts so I think I'll leave it and uh, I'm gonna put it back together and see if it'll work I, I'm somewhat hopeful but you know get your hopes up then what happens all right the moment of truth take it in to the camera to uh, the TV see if it'll work all right all right so I'm gonna plug it in that's how you turn it on. This thing does not have a power button. All right, so at least I still got the K down here. I'm gonna go with the keys that worked before Z. Yeah, see that's so weird. Z, X. And now I'm gonna space it. Hopefully you can see this. And now the question T. Oh, that worked. R, excellent. E, W, Q. So it seems like it's working. So I think all the keys are working. Um, I actually have to figure out how, how the actual computer works now. But Q, 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 Q is good. U, W, 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 E, 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 R, 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 T, T, T. 
So at the moment it's working, it looks like that fixed the keyboard. That little copper tape is, is working at the moment and that whole keyboard seems to be working. So that's pretty damn good. I'm pleased with that for sure. All right, so I don't know if I did this right. I put in print, let's see if this works. 20 go to 10 and I'm gonna type in run now. And press enter. Actually, holy crap. Five out of ten. So it, it so it seems like it works. I actually don't know how to stop it. Um, I'm more familiar with uh, basic on the Apple, but it does seem like it is working. I got to figure out the nuances of this and how some of the function keys and things work. But holy smokes, so it does work, uh, and I'm really super happy. So if this video helps you at all, fix your uh, Tomic Sinclair 1000. That's fantastic. Uh, leave a comment below. Great, thanks.